Hello again, everybody. David Cleary along with Mike Sheehan here at Blankenship Field getting set for the first round of the TSSAA playoffs. The Wildcats taking on the Saudi Daisy Trojans for the sixth time in seven years as the Wildcats come on to Blankenship Field. The Wildcats come into this game with a record of 7-3, and three, while Saudi Daisy comes in at 3-7. and seven. The Wildcats are the number two team out of Region 3. Saudi Daisy is the number three team. The Wildcats will win the toss, will elect to kick off, and we're about to have football here from Blankenship Field. Tyler Dunham will be kicking off of the Wildcats. He'll be kicking from left to right if you're looking down from the home side here at Blankenship Field on FM 92.7, FM 94.7. The ball is put down on the tee. Let's see if he drills it or if he pops it up. They have a couple guys standing back, the Oak Ridge students. Not as big as some crowds we've had. They're on their feet making some noise. The officials are ready. And here comes Tyler Dunham's approach. And this playoff ball game is about to get underway here from Blankenship Field. Here's the kick. It is a pop-up kick angling over to the sideline. And it is going to be a fair catch made at around the around the 40 yard line. So not as far and deep as Coach Gaddis likes him to be, but we are underway here in Saudi Daisy. He will come onto the field. Their quarterback is Isaac Barnes. He is six foot, he is 170 pounds. He is a senior. They have three receivers split to his right. The Wildcats put man coverage on them, single man to the left, one lone running back in the backfield for the Trojans. Just underway, first and 10, they'll pass on the first play of the game. The pass is intercepted, Oak Ridge. Matthew Swigert, he's got it at the 50, moves the ball to the 45. So just like that, the Wildcats on the opening play of the ball game get yet another turnover. It'll be first and 10 for the Oak Ridge High School Wildcats. Mike, a great start for Oak Ridge. What a tremendous start, David. He, the receiver had the ball in his hands and he tipped it and it ran right into the, the Oak Ridge defender and he ran, he ran it back for about, oh, 10 yards. So the Wildcats are in great position here early in, in the first quarter. First down, 10 yards to go. The ball's at the 47 yard line. The Wildcats. Mitchell Gibbons hands it off Kendall Jackson. Man, he is met in the middle part of the line and driven back by a host of white shirts from Saudi Daisy. No gain on the play. Just underway, 11.40 to play and counting here in the first period here at Blankenship Field, the first round of the TSSAA playoffs. No score. The Wildcats will send the freshman as a receiver split to the left side. That is Brandon Hayward. To the right side, Jabrice Taylor, Cole Adams, Jonathan Stewart. Mitchell Gibbons, the quarterback. Ethan Hewitt is the center. Second down, officially nine yards to go for the Wildcats. High snap. Mitchell has time. Now he's going to be sacked. Dropped at the 50-yard line. They quickly came in. Mitchell got blasted down, and he's a little bit shaken up. And the Wildcats can ill afford to uh, get new issues here because the Wildcat backup quarterback, their second-team quarterback, Hayden Tarwater, is not able to go today and it looks like Mitchell's going to have to come out of the ball game and because of that the Wildcats are going to bring into the ball game Peyton Sharp he's going to get a chance to play here on this as they adjust on the Oak Ridge sideline so we're just a couple plays into it the Wildcats bring Peyton Sharp in the ball game first time Peyton has seen some early game action here he is a transfer from Middle Tennessee he is a sophomore player as the Wildcats have it, third down, 13 yards to go. Kendall Jackson, the lone running back. This pitch will go to Kendall. Needs a block, he's got it. He moves the ball off the field for a 10 bank of Oak Ridge first down as he brings the ball across the 40 yard line. Very, very close to the sticks. They're going to say it's actually just a bit short. The Wildcats are going to have it fourth down and about two yards to go, Mike. David, I think this is four down territory for the Wildcats. I believe they're going to go ahead and go for it. It's about fourth and two, and the way Kendall Jackson can run and the way the line's blocking, I, I look for us to go on and go for this, and we are. It's officially fourth down, three yards to go. The quarterback is Peyton Sharp. He relays the play to Oak Ridge running back. Kendall Jackson, fourth down, three yards to go. The ball at the Sonny Daisy 40-yard line. High snap. Peyton Sharp's going to be sacked, and they're going to – 
Wildcats are going to get knocked down at the 45-yard line. Peyton looked for Kendall. He was not in the backfield there, and I think just a, a, a misplay right there, and the Wildcats turn it over on down. So after the turnover, the Wildcats unable to move the ball. Mike? David Kane, Raider, number 72 for the Saudi Daddy Trojans. Is, is, he's made two disruptive plays already in this drive for Oak Ridge, and that time the, the high snap, by the time he got the ball down, Kane was right on top of him. First down, 10 yards to go. They're going to run the ball. They're going to be met at the line. No, not much there at all. They moved the ball right back to the line of scrimmage. The Wildcats have Jacob Bourbon, Jackson Adams, and uh, it looks like Trey Rowe around. That's uh, Wittenbarger, Trent Tanner Wittenbarger, 5'9", 170 pound. They list him as a freshman. No gain on the play. Second down, 10 yards to go. Ball's at the 45-yard line of Saudi Daisy. 9.25 to play here in the first quarter. 0-0 the score. Quarterback is Isaac Barnes. Six foot, 170 pounder. He's back to pass. Feeling pressure. Fires a pass, and it's almost intercepted again. The ball is deflected. The Wildcats got a lot of good pressure in there, and the ball is deflected. Mike, the Wildcats almost got to him, but he almost got the pass off and almost intercepted again. Yeah, you know, the Wildcats were pressuring the quarterback quite a bit, and Matthew Swagger reached out and swatted that ball down as it was just about to get the receiver incomplete. Brings up now third down and long, 10 yards for the Trojan. Nine minutes, 13 seconds to play first quarter. As, my, as Mike Sheehan said, third down, 10. Ball's at the 45-yard line, back to pass. Pressured again, fires a pass out here. It's going to be caught right at the sticks, and I believe that should be enough for a first down. Defending out there was uh, is Ricketts on the res, on the reception it is a first down so the Wildcat kind of philosophy on defense they will give up the short pass when uh, when it's there and they pick up 10 yards just enough for a first down at the 43 yard line up to the Lionel Cubs Saudi Daisy at the 43 now the quarterback's going to roll to his right cut it up the field and slide down himself at around the 37 yard line so it's a gain on the play Eight minutes, 58 seconds and counting. We have no score. Not a great start here for the Wildcats with the exception of the Matthew Swigert interception. It'll be second down and about five yards to go as we play here at Blankenship Field in the first round of the TSSAA playoffs. Once again, Barnes, one single running back. He's got two receivers to his left, two to his right. Pass is going to be caught. Once again, they're going to good yardage across the 35 up to around the 32-yard line. And... Another fine gain on the short pass, and that'll be, as we spot the ball down officially at the 32-yard line, another first down. So the short passing game for Saudi Daisy. They're moving the ball against the Oak Ridge defense. First down, 10 yards to go at the Wildcat 32, and there's movement across the line, and we'll check the call. That particular time, their lineman up front jumped offside. This will be a five-yard offside penalty against the Trojan. The Wildcats have never lost a ball game to Saudi Daisy in the playoffs. The Wildcats lead the all-time series 13-2. The last two years, we had to go to Saudi Daisy for the ball game. They're back here at Blankenship Field. First down, 15 yards to go. 8-10 to play first quarter, 0-0 the score. Balls move back to the 37-yard line. Two receivers to the left, three to the right. Barnes to pass, quick pass, caught. Right around the 33-yard line, the stop is made quickly out there by the Wildcats' Preston Turner. It'll be a gain on the play, a short gain this time of about six yards. Ricketts once again on the catch. It'll be for Saudi Daisy. Second down, we'll call it right at 10 yards to go, so a gain of five. So they get the penalty yardage back on the first down. Logan Ricketts, six foot three, 175 pounds senior the receiver and he uh, at Ricketts they've had several Ricketts come through their program once again three receivers split to the right of the quarterback one lone running back the Wildcats showing blitz the Wildcats crash the line of scrimmage hard they fire the pass it's caught once again the Wildcats make the stop out there at the 27 yard line it'll be Ricketts once again on the catch so they have uh, only attempted I think one running play here it'll be Preston Turner on the on the uh, tackle, but it's still a gain of six. Third down and three and a half yards to go. Seven minutes to play. The Oak Ridge defense giving up yardage here as they come to the line. Third down, four yards to go. Got to play a little tighter on the on the pass plays. Quarterback's going to run it himself, and he's got good running room. He might even have a touchdown. He moves the ball to the goal line. Touchdown, Saudi Daisy. 
I don't think the Wildcat defense expected him to tuck it and run. Nobody was shading him, and he just takes it in from 26 yards out, and Soddy Daisy leads six to nothing. Mike? David, that was just a very elusive play that time. And, you know, he, he made three tacklers miss, and when he pulled the ball to go down, there wasn't anybody within 10 yards of him and just ran between the linebackers into the end zone for the Saudi Daddy touchdown. And the Trojans will go for the extra point. The ball is down, the kick is up, and it is good. Saudi Daisy leads Oak Ridge 7 to nothing here at Blankenship Field, and we'll be back with the Trojan kickoff in a moment. Welcome back. Here's the kickoff by Saudi Daisy. It's going to be a squib kick right down the middle of the field. Jabrice Taylor fields it at the 15, to the 20, to the 25, to the 30, to the 35-yard line, up the field to the 40, to the 45, to the 50-yard line, and down he goes just shy of the 50 at the 47-yard line. When Jalen Henderson... Jalen Hayward, that is, went down. The Wildcats were without their return man, but Jabrice Taylor has filled in quite nicely for the Oak Ridge High School Wildcats, and he returns it to near midfield. So back on offense will go the Wildcats. Oak Ridge has struggled with their offense in the first part of this ball game. Let's see what they can do here. First down, 10 yards to go. The ball officially at the 47-yard line. Mitchell Gibbons, a quarterback. He's going to pitch it out to Kendall Jackson, who tries to cut back inside. He's at midfield. Moves the ball forward for a 10-bank of Oak Ridge first down, all the way down to the Saudi Daisy 39-yard line. Nothing fancy, just a simple toss sweep, and Kendall Jackson has the best run of the night for the Wildcats. That's a 10-bank of Oak Ridge first down. It'll be first down, 10 yards to go. 7 to nothing. our score, Soddy Daisy in the lead. Officially, they put the ball down at the 40-yard line. The Wildcats have two receivers split to the right. Single man to the right side, left side that is, slot man. Man comes in motion. Mitchell's going to pass. Pass is incomplete. Intended out in the flats for Brandon Hayward right at the 35-yard line. Looked like he hit him in the hands, but I think he was kind of thinking about running before he actually caught it and wasn't able to make the catch. So it'll bring up second down and 10 yards to go. Ball is at the 40-yard line, 7 to nothing. our score. The winner of this game will travel to either Ray County or if the Wildcats win, they'll host the uh, Fulton Falcons if they're able to knock off Ray County. Second down, 10 yards to go. Here comes the handoff right side. The Wildcats to Bryce Taylor back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. So the Wildcat offense stalling once again. It'll be third down now facing Oak Ridge. The ball still at the 40-yard line. Trojans 7, Wildcats nothing from Blankenship Field on FM 92.7, PrepRadio.com, and Oak Ridge Schools Television, Channel 15. My name is David Cleary. Mike Sheehan is joining us here. James Branson could not be with us tonight. He'll be back next week for the second-round playoff ball game if, if the Wildcats win this game tonight. Third down 10, Mitchell Gibbons. Waiting for the play. The center is Ethan Hewitt. He'll snap it back to him. High snap. He's going to fire the pass. It's going to be high and almost intercepted. Pass intended at around the 25-yard line, and the Wildcats will be forced to punt. So the Wildcats picked up one first down on that particular drive, but then the draw, the drive stalls out, and the Wildcats will be forced to punt into the game. Will come the duo, the dynamic duo of Jacob Bourbon along with Preston Turner, Fourth down, 10 yards to go. Those two guys will be standing back at around the 50-yard line. Of course, in previous games, we've seen Preston fake one before. Let's see if he does here. And here is the snap, and Preston is going to run it, and he is not going to get the first down. He is going to go down at the Trojan 42-yard line. So one of the few times Preston actually has made a mistake. That time he really didn't have much of any kind of a gap at all. Saudi Daisy was right on top of it. And once again, their offense will come out on the field. They'll take over first down 10 yards to go. So Oak Ridge not really looking sharp here in the early going. They trail it early, 7 to nothing. First down 10 yards to go for the Trojans. Moving right to left, wearing their all-white jerseys with gold and blue trim. The Wildcats in their Cardinal jerseys with white Football pants. First down, 10 yards to go. Saudi Daisy starting this drive at their own 41. Saudi Daisy leads the Wildcats 7 to nothing. Balls at the 41 yard line. They're heading away from Jackson Square. Some movement on the line of scrimmage by the Wildcats, and Saudi Daisy will call a timeout. Let's take it with them. Saudi Daisy leads the Wildcats 7 to nothing, and we'll be back to Blankenship Field in a moment. 
Welcome back to Blankenship Field. First and 10, Saudi Daisy. Barnes wants to run it. Moves the ball across the 45 to the 50. That's another first down. Scampers out of bounds over towards his own sideline and around the 47-yard line where it now will be another first down and 10-yard-to-go situation for Saudi Daisy. They have done an excellent job with Barnes getting out of uh, trouble, just scampering, using his legs to pick up good yardage, and they've got another first down in Oak Ridge territory. Ball officially at the 46-yard line of the Wildcats. Barnes will pass. little screen pass is going to be caught and then pushed out of bounds by the Wildcats at around the 42-yard line. Oak Ridge trails 7 to nothing as we play here at Blankenship Field. David, they're executing very well right now. That last pass to Bryant Brett went, only went for three yards, but the Wildcats covered it pretty good defensively on that particular play. As the officials seem to be talking about something right here, I didn't see a flag on the play, but they're having a conversation. It'll be second down and seven unless there is a flag on the play. Four minutes, 49 seconds to play. Official comes over to the home side, and let's see if he's going to signal something. I'm not sure. The, uh, one of the line judges is going to come over to say something to Coach Gaddis. And uh, one of the other officials goes over and says something to um, the Saudi Daisy head coach. And whatever it was, we're going to continue here. Second down and seven yards to go for the Saudi Daisy Trojans. The ball is at the right at the three or 44-yard line. The Trojans and the Wildcats, the two teams started playing back in 1999. Saudi Daisy moving the ball crisply against the Wildcats. The Wildcats have also given them very short fields. Isaac Barnes is the quarterback once again, and up to the line he comes. He'll this time hand it to his running back, and he moves the ball a little bit across the, to the 43 yard line. That's really no gain on the play for Tanner Wittenberger, 5'10, 170 pounder. We'll call it no gain on the play. At most, a half a yard we will keep it right at, well, we'll call it third down and six yards to go. The ball is at the 42-yard line of Oak Ridge. Saudi Daisy already on top of Oak Ridge, 7 nothing. The Wildcat offense unable to move on their uh, first two drives. Let's see what Barnes can do. you got to watch where he goes here. He has run the ball well against us. He's feeling some pressure again. He's about to be sacked. He escapes, moves the ball off the field, and slides down once again. And then the Wildcats hit him late. Can't do that. He went sliding on the field. The flag came way back from the secondary, and I did see some contact between the Wildcats. They had moved the ball up to the 42-yard line, really hardly any game, but then the Wildcats make a crucial mistake, and they hit him late. And they'll walk it off here once again. Seven to nothing, our score. The Wildcats struggling here in the early going. As the ball's walked up the field to around the around the 23-yard line, where it's now first down and 10 yards to go. We're on FM 92.7, PrepRadio.com, and Oak Ridge Schools Television Channel 15. Isaac Barnes, the quarterback, is going to drift off wide to the left side. They're going to come with a new quarterback, and he's going to be, what's the call? Flags are down. We had some movement across the line. We'll see if somebody was set not set on the line of scrimmage. Let's see if it's a five yard step off. It is indeed a dead ball foul, illegal procedure against the Saudi Daisy Trojans. So it'll be first down and 15 yards to go. Yeah, we caught a break on that play, David. You know, now they backed them up five more yards. So they're, they're 28 yards away from the goal. Ball's at the 28, as Mike said, 340 to play first quarter, seven nothing Saudi Daisy. Quarterbacks to pass, in trouble, he is sacked. The Wildcats finally get to him at the 35-yard line. Oak Ridge comes in quickly. Jackson Adams, and it's a big loss on the play of about seven yards. It'll be for Saudi Daisy now. Second down and very, very long. The balls walk back to the 34. Second down, 21 yards to go. Two receivers once again split off to the right side. Little screen pass is going to be almost intercepted by Oak Ridge's Jacob Bourbon. He knocks it down. That's exactly what the Wildcats needed. Mike, the Wildcats need to stop on defense. Yeah, I'll tell you, the Wildcats are putting a lot more pressure on Isaac Barnes now after they've watched what's happened here the first two, two series of downs. So that time he was backing up, trying to get 
to, to make time to pass the ball. Passed it off his back foot, and Bourbon's there to knock it down. That brings up third down and, and what, 34? Three minutes to play, back to pass. Fires it out in the flats, wide open. Once again, they're gonna push him out of bounds with Matthew Swigert. It's gonna be fourth down facing Saudi Daisy. They lead Oak Ridge, seven to nothing. Two minutes, 56 seconds to play here in the first quarter. The Wildcats, as Coach Gaddis has said, they'll give up the short pass. And that time they gave up an 11 yard completion. They've given up several of those. It's fourth down and 10. The ball is at the 23 yard line. The Wildcats need a stop here. Once again, they trail it by a score of seven to nothing. Clock is stopped, two minutes, 56 seconds to play. The winner advances to play the winner of Ray County and Fulton. Ball's at the 23 yard line. Here's pressure, Jackson Adams grabs him, slings him down to the turf at Blankenship Field and the Wildcats will take over on downs. Mike, a really big play. Yeah, Jackson Adams really stunted in there twice on that particular series of downs for the Wildcat for two big plays. And the last one being the best because that was fourth down and it snuffed the drive out from the Saudi Daisy Trojan. Now our offense has got to get it cranked up, Dave. We need to get down the field and score some points. So the Wildcat offense is on the field. The Wildcats have struggled offensively here to get things going. Wildcats Mitchell Gibbons is the quarterback. Lone running back behind him, three receivers split to the right. Mitchell's going to pass. Screen pass is going to be caught. That's Jonathan Stewart, and Jonathan moves the ball across the 35 up to around the 39-yard line. 240 and counting. It's a gain on the play. The stop is made by Gavin Lane, 5'7", 147-pounder. It's a gain of eight on the play for Oak Ridge. Second down, two. The ball is at the Oak Ridge. 38 yard line. The Wildcats have Brandon Hayward, freshman, split out to the left side along with Jabrice Taylor. Jonathan Stewart is split out to the right. Mitchell Gibbons from the shotgun. Once again, he's going to hand it to Kendall. Kendall tries to get outside and he does. He's at the 40. He's at the 50. Kendall Jackson down the Saudi Daisy sideline inside their territory. Finally brought down at around the 40, around the 37 yard line. That's a 10 bank of Oak Ridge first down. Really, really hard run by Kendall and the Wildcats will come to the line quickly. Nice run, Mike. Absolutely, David. He got outside that time. Got some good blockers by Jabrice Taylor who was in the slot on that left side over there and sprung him loose for a big gainer. Wildcats have it first down, 10 yards to go at the Saudi Daisy 37 yard line. Minute 45 to play first quarter. Trojans on top. Quick pass is going to be caught, caught by Brandon Hayward, bounced up there. It's a gain of about two. The pass was low. It is a positive pass. Brandon Hayward does make the reception. 128 to play, gain of four, second down, and six yards to go. Seven to nothing is our score. As play is halted, officially a timeout. One of the Wildcats comes off the field limping. So the Wildcats. Let's see, we'll have to make a substitution there as Oak Ridge will have to get a new lineman in because the injured Wildcat is Vinny West, six foot one, 250 pound senior. Hope Vinny's okay. Vinny's been a really a mainstay on the line since his sophomore year. Second down for the Wildcats. We'll call it a long five to go for a first. Mitchell pitches it out to Kendall. Kendall cuts back across the grain, moves the ball and falls forward to the 30 yard line. It'll be a gain of two. Saudi Daisy's defense playing sound. Very solid here in the early going. And it'll be with 50 seconds to play, third down and long again for the Wildcats. David Rett Stottle, 43 the seconds for the Trojan Odie Trajan. They're really playing tough up front. The Wildcats been doing a fair job up front, but we've got to hold those linemen out. Third down, four yards to go once again for the Wildcats. Mitchell's going to hand it to Kendall. Kendall's got good running room this time. He picks up what appears to be a 10 bank of Oak Ridge first down as he moves the ball to the 25 yard line. Mike running behind the center, Ethan Hewitt. The Wildcats have a 10 bank first down. Absolutely, David, very much so. And, and that left guard, Robert Hill, doing a really good job right up the middle that time. And Kendall Jackson's so strong, David. He just kept driving those legs and got uh, the necessary first down. Now the Wildcats have the ball first and 10 on the 24. Let's see if they 
play get a playoff here to close out the quarter. I think they will. Mitchell is going to pass. Pass is going to be caught and dropped. Jabrice Taylor was the intended receiver. The Wildcats have had a couple drops in this one. Jabrice should have caught that one. He'll tell you he should. 1.6 seconds to play here in the first quarter. It'll be second down, 10 yards to go. Final play of the first quarter. Saudi Daisy leads Oak Ridge by a score of seven to nothing. Brian White is the offensive coordinator for the Wildcats. He signals in the play to the senior quarterback. The Wildcats, second down 10. The ball at the Trojan 24 yard line. Final play of the quarter, Mitchell Gibbons. Hands it to Kendall Jackson, hit in the backfield, drop for a loss. He'll lose six, and that's the final play of the first quarter. When we come back, the Wildcats will have it third and long. We'll be back with the start of the second quarter. Seven to nothing, our score back in 60 seconds. Here come the Wildcats to the line, third down, 14 yards to go. The ball is at the 28-yard line of the Saudi Daisy Trojans. Kendall Jackson, the lone running back. Jabrice Taylor comes in motion. Wildcats hand it off to Kendall. Kendall's got a big hole, moves the ball up the field, down the sideline to the 10, pushed out of bounds officially there. It'll be first and 10 for the Wildcats as Oak Ridge gets a first down around the left side. The Wildcats, as Coach Gaddis said, he wants to keep it on the ground, and they did. It'll be first down, and I believe still 10 yards to go. So the Wildcats could pick up perhaps another first down right at the goal line. Oak Ridge down seven to nothing here, 11.53 to play in the second quarter. The Wildcats down here in the playoffs here. Blanket Sheffield, the game you're listening to live on FM 92.7. Wildcats have Jonathan Stewart split to the right side along with Jabrice Taylor. The Wildcats have a slot man from the 10 yard line. Hand off, Kendall Jackson. Kendall Jackson hit and dropped in the backfield again. They went to the same direction, short side of the field, what appeared to be almost the same play, and he just got belted in the Wildcats. Junior running back will lose a yard on the play, well, about a half a yard on the play. We'll call it second down and 10 and a half yards to go. Wildcats, the ball, the nose of the ball, just on the, on the hash mark, right at the 10 yard line. The Wildcats have Jonathan Stewart and Jabrice Taylor as receivers to the right, and coverage on them. Slot man, Cole Adams. Mitchell's going to pass, fires it across the way, caught. That's Cole Adams, touchdown, Cole Adams. The Wildcats score, and to under with them one extra point from time this ball game. Mitchell Gibbons finds Cole Adams. Big play, the Wildcats about to tie the ball game. Yeah, that was just great execution, David. They had good blocking again. Uh, Mitchell Gibbons kind of rolled his right, and threw the ball into the flat, Cole Adams, and Cole just outran the defender into the end zone for the Wildcat touchdown. Efren Rodriguez will be the kicker. The holder is Mitchell Gibbons tonight. Hayden Tarwater feeling a little down. We hope he feels better. Here's the hold. The kick is on its way. It's up, and it is good. 7-7 seven, seven our score, 11 0 8 to play here in the first quarter. We'll be back with the Wildcat kickoff in 60 seconds. Seven seven our score. Tyler Dunham to kick off again for the Wildcats. 11 08 to play first half. So the Wildcats march the ball down the field. The touchdown pass covering just over 10 yards for Oak Ridge quarterback Mitchell Gibbons and Cole Adams. Tyler Dunham to pop it up. The last time his first kick was a short pop-up kick. 11 08 to play. Here's the kick. It's high. It's going to be short again. It's going to be caught right at the 37 yard line. I think they want the ball a little bit up the field a little bit. Tyler's done a really good job with the pop-up kick all season long, but the first two tonight have been a little bit short. Mike, the Wildcats are back tied with the Saudi Daisy Trojans. Yeah, absolutely, Dave. That was a 70 yard drive by the Wildcats. Kendall Jackson doing the Yeoman's job of running the ball down the field and mixing it up with the pass, Mitchell Gibbons to the 10 yards for Cole Adams. First down, 10 yards to go. The ball is at the 38 yard line. The handoff goes to the running back and he is gonna be tackled. The Wildcats grabbed him with the jersey and then they finally push him back. The ball carrier, they list him as a freshman. That is Tanner Wittenbarger, five foot nine, 178 pounder. The tackle is made by Oak Ridge's Jacob Bourbon, gain of two, second down, 
eight yards to go. The ball is at the 40-yard line. 10 minutes, 42 seconds to play. We're in the second period. The Wildcats and Trojans, they first started playing, as I said, back in 1999. Isaac Barnes, a quarterback, he wants to pass. Feeling some pressure, eludes it, and Trey Rowe has to sling him down as he moves the ball up to the 45-yard line. I tell you, they have done a really, really good job, Mike, running the ball with the quarterback. They absolutely have, David. He he has just eluded a lot of defenders, and he's pretty doggone strong, David. Once he gets his legs driving, he, he looks uh, – reminds me a little bit of Kendall Jackson, the way he runs. Not quite as powerful, but he's still getting the job done. Third down, three yards to go. The ball is at the 45-yard line. The Wildcats need a stop here. Barnes wants to pass. Fires a pass. Is going to be caught or right around the 45-yard line. Another reception for the Saudi Daisy Trojans, and that is a first down. Just a short pass. Not much running room there at all as the Wildcat defense gives up another short pass and a first down. Nine minutes, 37 seconds to play. 7-7 seven, seven is our score as we play here in the second period here at Blankenship Field. Last week, this team got beat 55 to nothing. They don't look like a team that's 55 to nothing uh, kind of team, but tonight they're playing Oak Ridge tough. Quarterback's going to roll, fire the pass in the flats, and the pass is caught. Matthew Swigert drives him out of bounds. Clock should stop here, 9-17 to play. Wildcats play off the receivers. There is a flag down on the play in the middle part of the field. Mike, that's one thing the Wildcats do on defense. They'll give up the short pass, but Saudi Daisy has definitely taken advantage of that. They definitely have. David. This is a, a well-coached team tonight. They seem to know what Oak Ridge is going to do on just about every play. This time uh, there's a penalty against the Trojans. Ineligible receiver downfield, David. So that'll be a five-yard step off. Nine minutes, 18 seconds, 18 seconds to play here in the first half. So an eligible receiver. It'll be for the Trojans. The ball is at the 45-yard line now. It'll be first down, 15 yards to go. Once again, they've got Wittenberger in the backfield with the quarterback, Isaac Barnes. Ricketts, a receiver to the left. Here's a little quick pass, wide open. Once again in the flats, and they're just picking on that side on the short on the short side of the field, it's going to go to once again to Logan Ricketts, six foot three, 175 pounder, and that is a first down. They're just dinking and dunking Oak Ridge with the short little passes in the flats, and that's another first down. They pick up yardage up to the 39 yard line. Seven, seven, our score. Quarterback's going to fire the pass this time, and it is going to be caught, then fumbled. The ball's loose on the ground. Who's got it? The Wildcats say they have it. Let's see if it's an incompletion. They're going to say, he was down on the play, although I see no signal. Now I do. The Oak Ridge fans are reacting, and kind of a late signal. Mike, did you see who came up with the football? Yeah, no, not exactly. I did not, but I'll find out in just a minute. Here comes the Oak Ridge offense, I believe, onto the field. Jonathan Stewart splits out as a receiver, splits in, splitting off to the far right of the quarterback. Little quick pass is going to be caught. The Wildcats moving the ball up the field up to the 50-yard line. The Wildcats on the reception. It's going to go to Brandon Hayward, the freshman, and he pits, picks up good yardage. It's going to be a gain right at the sticks, but just shy of a first down, so we'll call it a game, gain of nine. Eight minutes, 46 seconds to play. We're in the first half in a quick moving game. 7-7 seven, seven is our score. Second down, one yard to go. Mitchell Gibbons at quarterback for the Wildcats. The ball is at the 48-yard line of Oak Ridge. Handoff goes for what appears to be close to a first down up to the 50-yard line. He just needed about a foot. That's all he needed, and that's what he's got. It'll be first down, 10 yards to go, a 10 bank of Oak Ridge first down as he moves the ball to the 48-yard line. 7-7 seven, seven our score. The winner of this game plays the winner of Fulton and Ray County. And hopefully Mike will get some scores for us in the uh, some other games going on here tonight during our, our uh, halftime show. First down, 10, the ball right at midfield at the 50-yard line. 
Senior quarterback Mitchell Gibbons will hand it off to Kendall Jackson. Kendall outside to the 45-yard line, moves the ball to the 40, still on his way to the 35, down to the Saudi Daisy 33-yard line where his forward progress is stopped, but not before he picks up a 10-bank of Oak Ridge first down. Really hard running tonight by Kendall Jackson, Mike Sheehan. David, that was just a beautiful run by Kendall Jackson. Once he got past the line of scrimmage, he made about three people miss, and then he drug three more with him to, for, a, to, you know, a tremendous effort by Kendall Jackson. He's got some great moves, David. He, he makes a lot of people miss. Officially, they say he's out at the 33-yard line. First down, 10 yards to go for the Wildcats. 7.42 to play first half. Mitchell Gibbons has a touchdown pass to his credit. He hands it off to Kendall, another hard run. Not quite as many yards. He keeps those legs driving, moves the ball to the 30. It's a gain of three, a modest gain. It looked like initially that he was not going to get much at all, but he just kept driving, and it's a gain of three. Second down, we'll call it a long six to go for a first, so let's give him four on that run. 7-17 to play. Jonathan Stewart splits out to the right side. Jabrice Taylor, this is the right of the quarterback. One lone running back, actually two. A slot man is Cole Adams. He has a touchdown earlier. Like some movement on the line, but no contact across the line. 12 seconds on the play clock here. Second down, six yards to go. Mitchell calls the play at the line of scrimmage, which is the 29-yard line. Pass is going to be caught. The Wildcats trying to get outside. They do at the 20, stumbling to the 15-yard line. That'll be another 10 back of Oak Ridge first down. Jabrice Taylor on the reception. First and 10 Wildcats, Mike Sheehan. David, that was an excellent pass that time by Mitchell giving to Jabrice. He hit him right in the numbers, and Jabrice was able to get up the field very quickly, elude the defender right at the point of contact, and move the ball down for the first down. Now it brings up first and 10 on the 14. Here come the Wildcats to the line, heading away from Jackson Square towards the scoreboard. Mitchell Gibbons will pitch it out to Kendall Jackson, makes a cut, tries to get outside, cuts it across to the 10, moves the ball across the 10, flags are down. Might have a block in the very a clip. Saw one of the Trojans getting up, and we'll see. He got the ball to around the 8-yard line. Mainer on the stop. We'll check the call here. The officials come over to the home side and say it's a penalty against the Wildcats. Six minutes, 22 seconds to play. Seven, seven our score. Not really the game that I expected to see. I, the way I saw the Saudi Daisy team last week just get blistered by Walker Valley. Yes, penalty yards just step back and it's a big one back to the, all the way back to the um, 23 yard line where it now will be first down and 20 yards to go. Can't have penalties, can't have turnovers. Let's see if the Wildcats can overcome this one. The, the a block, a blindside block is called. I saw one of the Trojans getting up off the ground, so obviously that was the call. Look down on the field here to see if Vinny West is back of the ball game. So Wildcats have it first down and officially 19 yards to go. Mitchell has time. Across the middle, pass. Oh, that's gotta be pass interference. Every flag, including the American flag, the Tennessee State flag, just got flown, thrown onto the onto the uh, field here. The receiver was going to make a catch, but then just got mugged at around the eight-yard line. And pass interference <laughs> has got to be the call. And Wildcats in a 7-7 ball game. And Although they're having a conversation, there is no way in the world that is not pass interference against Saudi Daisy. No way in the world. And they have yet to see the signal. And they're going to step off the yardage against the Saudi Daisy Trojans from the point. And he's kind of wandering around. He's not exactly sure where to put the ball down. He is going to put it down right at the 12-yard line where it'll be for the Wildcats. First down. And first down and eight yards to go. The ball at the 12 yard line of Saudi Daisy. The Wildcats trying to take the lead. Their first lead of the night, 5.53 to play. 7-7 seven, seven our score, we're in the first half. Mitchell will pitch to Kendall Jackson. Kendall trying to get around the corner, cuts across the 10 to the eight yard line he goes. It's a gain of about two. Stop is made by Saudi Daisy's number three, that is Logan Ricketts once again, maybe Landon Lewis as well. 
Officially, they're going to put him at the nine. Second down, five yards to go. We're down to 528 to play here in the first half and a fast-moving half here on FM 92.7. As the Wildcats, Jonathan Stewart splits out to the right of the quarterback. The Wildcats have Preston Turner to the left side. One other receiver, Brandon Hayward. Slot man to the right. It'll be Kendall with the hole. Moves the ball and not too much. Back to the eight-yard line. There wasn't a whole lot of running room there. The Wildcats trying to get some running room. Now it's going to be third down facing the Wildcats. Kaysen Staggs in the ball game. The Wildcats offensive line. Benny West had to come limping out of the ball game earlier in the game. The Wildcats still have Hill in there, Kaysen Staggs, Ethan Hewitt. The Wildcats also have Michael Walker in the ball game, six foot three, 215 pounder. It's third down, four yards to go. The Wildcats had to throw it in for their first touchdown around the same spot on the field. Balls to the eight, third down and four. Mitchell Gibbons to pass, end zone, passes there. Jabrice Taylor got turned around and it's fourth down. Wildcats trying to run the ball against Saudi Daisy, but weren't able to get much going here. They got held by a pass interference, and the Wildcats will attempt a field goal to try to take the lead. Efren Rodriguez, 5'9", 220-pound sophomore, will come into the game. The holder is Mitchell Gibbons, 7-7 seven, seven the score, 4.26 to play. He'll put the block down right at the... 16-yard line, making this a 26-yard kick from the right hash. Kicking towards the scoreboard, the Wildcats trying to take the lead. The kick is on its way. It's up. It looks good, and it is good. The Wildcats take the lead on a 26-yard field goal, 4.22 to play, 10-7 our score. We'll be back with the Wildcat kickoff in 60 seconds. And we are back here at Blankenship Field. Tyler Dunham to kick off once again. He's had a couple short pop-up kicks. Oak Ridge with their first lead, 10 to seven. This time he's gonna boot it long. It's gonna be fielded at the five to the 10. Coming off to the Oak Ridge Saudi Daisy sideline. There's a block in the back, no call. There's the flag. He does return it up to around the 22 yard line. Another blind side block there taking out one of the Wildcats. It looked like either Cole or Marcus Melton. One of the Wildcats got smashed down there. It'll be a penalty against Saudi Daisy. 4-13 to play, a low scoring ball game. This team gave up 55 points last week to a good Walker Valley team. But so far tonight, they have really controlled the ball, uh, Mike Sheehan. The Wildcats need to get a good stop here and kind of hold them down here, maybe get a chance to get their ball back. Yeah, and I could definitely hope for that, David. And Benny West is still sitting on the bench, David. He's definitely got a, a low low leg injury of some sort, and he's still sitting on the bench. I don't know if he's going to be able to come back in or not. The Wildcats really need to play tough defense right here, keep this very good, ex well-executed offensive team by the Saudi Day Detroit. They came to play, David. Half the distance to the goal, walk back to the nine yard line. First down, 10 yards to go, 413 to play first half, 10 to seven Oak Ridge. Barnes, a quarterback, is gonna run it. He has no place to go initially, cuts to the outside. He is dropped. Wildcats getting with Brian Kelly, BK on the stop, and they're gonna lose yardage. It's going to be a loss of two, second down, 12 yards to go. So the Wildcats doing a little bit better job, kind of shading the quarterback there, Mike. The the second down, 12 yards to go. 10 to 7 Oak Ridge. Barnes hands it off to the running back and he moves the ball until Brian Kelly and one other Wildcat just drive him solidly to the green fake turf here at Blankenship Field. It'll be third down and about nine yards to go, actually seven yards to go. Wittenbarger on the carry. Three minutes, 20 seconds to play right here. The Wildcats need a stop. The quarterback has been able to get some short passes to complete for first downs. He's also been able to run the ball. Third down, officially seven yards to go. Ball is at the 12-yard line. Barnes is the quarterback trying to take some time off the clock. Play clock is down to six. They're ticking it on down here. Up to the line he comes. Barnes to pass. Pressured. Running. Dropped. Right at the 11-yard line. And... It'll be fourth down facing them. Now let's see if Oak Ridge uses one of their timeouts. I see Coach Gaddis coming over to the sideline. It'll be with three minutes, actually two minutes and 47 seconds to play. Timeout asked for. Mike Sheehan, the Wildcats should get good field position right here. 
Yeah, absolutely, David. Isaiah Boone there on the stop for the Wildcats. That was a big play by Isaiah. Brings up fourth and long for the Trojans. They're going to have to kick the ball back. here. And we still got plenty of time. We've got two minutes and 47 seconds left here in the first half. Wildcat clinging to a 10-7 lead. 10-7 our score. It'll be fourth down and seven. The line of scrimmage is at the Saudi Daisy 12, dropping back to receive the kick. Preston Turner standing back at the 50-yard line. Their punter, his heel is at the goal line on the scoreboard side, the Jumbotron side. Here's the snap, the punt, it's away, it's a good one, high, and it's gonna be returnable. Preston fields it at the 45, at the 40. Preston Turner moves the ball to the Saudi Daisy 35-yard line. Great opportunity here, Mike Sheehan. The Wildcats have two minutes, 37 seconds to play in the first half and two timeouts remaining. Yeah, I like the way this is shaping up, David. A good return by Preston to set the Wildcats up. I only have 35 yards to the goal line now. I've got plenty of time, David. And uh, Mitchell Gibbons has been executing very well the last few series of downs, so hopefully we can get this ball into the end zone before the end of this first half. Matthew Swigert is a receiver on the left side of the quarterback along with Cole Adams and one other man, Jonathan Stewart. Man coverage here to the right side. The Wildcats first down, 10 yards to go. Little quick slant pass is caught. Wildcats move the ball up the field. Rumbling down to the 20 yard line at 10 back of Oak Ridge first down. Another completion to Matthew Swigert. First and 10 for the Wildcats. The Wildcats with 2.32 to play, leading Saudi Daisy 10 to seven. Nice pass, nice catch by Matthew Swigert. Mike. Excellent execution again that time by the Wildcats to get the ball out into the path of Matthew and he take it up the field for another first down. Wildcats to the line, first down, 10 yards to go. This time Kendall Jackson moves the ball to the 20, moves the ball to the 15 yard line of Saudi Daisy, another hard run for the Oak Ridge High School Junior. We're down to 2.12 to play. The Wildcats want a touchdown here. They don't want another field goal. Efren Rodriguez did knock one down earlier. It'll be second down and four yards to go. Two minutes exactly to play in the first half. 10 to seven is our score. Wildcats with it at the 15 yard line of Saudi Daisy. A little quick pass is caught at the 10 and actually pushed out at the 11 yard line. Clock is stopped. One minute, 49 seconds to play. That is enough for a 10 bank of Oak Ridge first down. So the Wildcats have it. Looks like first down, and they're going to say goal to go as the nose of the ball is right at the 10-yard line. The Wildcats need six points. Time else remaining. They lead Saudi Daisy 10 to 7. Trying to uh, win their eighth ball game of the year and their sixth consecutive win of the year. Mitchell Gibbons, a quarterback. Mitchell's going to hand it off to the slot man who's trying to get wide. Now cuts back inside. That's Oak Ridge's Preston Turner inside the five-yard line down to the four. It'll be second down, a goal to go. 97 seconds to play here in the first half. Oak Ridge on top, 10 to 7. Ball's officially at the five. The Wildcats come to the line. Ethan Hewitt, the center. First man there, Wildcats with a slot once again. That is Cole Adams. Mitchell Gibbons will pitch to Kendall Jackson. Blockers in front, cuts across the five to the three to the two, all the way down to the one-yard line where it'll be third down. Goal to go for the Wildcats. A minute, 10 to play here in the second quarter. The Wildcats officially going to be put down, but right at the one-yard line, we're down to 57 seconds to play. The ball right at the Saudi Daisy one. The Wildcats trying to put it in for another score. Mitchell Gibbons, Kendall Jackson. That is a touchdown for the Wildcats. Oak Ridge takes it in from one yard out. Kendall Jackson for Oak Ridge with 45 seconds to play in the first half and the Wildcats will go for the extra point. Wildcats got the stop on defense and got the touchdown, Mike Sheehan. Yes, great determination that time. Good line blocking up front. Everything was executed perfectly that time for the Wildcats. And it, Kendall drives it in for the big score. And now the Wildcats lead 16 to seven. Efren Rodriguez attempting the extra point. Be holding Kai Hirsch to snap. 
The hold, the kick is on its way, splits the uprights, and the Wildcats lead. Saudi Daisy, 17 to seven, with 45 seconds to play in the first half. We'll be back with the Wildcat kickoff in 60 seconds. Tyler Dudham's gonna kick off once again. Remember at halftime, we'll have Mark and Shauna Hayes first half statistics, 45 seconds to play, first half, 17-7, Oak Ridge on top of Saudi Daisy. Tyler's going to see if he boots one this time. He did the last time. He's going to pop it up again. And this one's going to be a little longer. Filled it at the 20, 30. Cuts to the outside and goes down right at the 34-yard line with 39 seconds. And, Mike, do you think Saudi Daisy will take a chance here? Or do you think they'll just head up the hill down 17-7, to 7, getting ready to recap, re re regroup? Or do you think they'll try to try to get in the end zone? I think they'll try to get into the end zone, David. You know, they, they're not – they came determined to play and win this game. And they've got to – the Wildcats have got to contain the quarterback, David. We can't let Isaac Barnes get away again. First down pass is going to be complete to the 40-yard line before the Wildcats. Uh, J.K. Morgan makes the stop. It's going to be a gain on the play with 30 seconds to play. It's going to be a gain of only five, and a timeout is asked for by Saudi Daisy. Second down, four yards to go, 31 seconds to play. In the first half, 17-7, Oak Ridge in the lead. Barnes at quarterback. He's got Wittenbarger. And receivers, including Rickett, split out here to the left side. They've got two to the right, two to the left. Barnes will pass. Across the middle, pass. Intercepted Oak Ridge. Here come the Wildcats. Cole Adams, he's at the 40. He's at the 30. Cole Adams picks it off. 21 seconds to play. Get the offense back out of the field. Let's get more points here. 17-7 the wow. score. Cole Adams had a pick six last year at Saudi Daisy. Took it back about 90 yards. He does return it all the way to the 32-yard line of Saudi Daisy, but there's only 21 seconds to play in the first half. The Wildcats want more points. 21 seconds to play, 17-7 the score. Senior quarterback, Mitchell Gibbons, the all-time leading touchdown thrower in Oak Ridge High School history, will be in the shotgun. First down, 10 yards to go. Jonathan Stewart, 1,000 yards in his career as a receiver. He's to the right. Mitchell pumps, gives it off, and the pass is complete. The Wildcats moving the ball up to the 25-yard line. It's... Hayward on the reception, 14 seconds to play, and the Wildcats use one of their timeouts. Tonight, Mike Sheehan, Jonathan Stewart went over 1,000 yards. He becomes only the 10th Wildcat to ever do that, 1,000 uh, yards receiving. 14 seconds to play. The Wildcats have the one timeout here, 17 to 7. Jonathan Stewart splits off to the right. Kendall is the lone running back, three receivers to the home side of the field. The Wildcats go with their backs to Jackson Square. First down, 10 yards to go. Mitchell fires it across the way, way overthrown. Wow, could have been picked off too. I mean, that was intended for Jonathan Stewart at around the six, and I think uh, Mitchell kind of unloaded a little bit too much on it. We're down to 11 seconds to play. Second down, 10 yards to go, 17-7 the score. So. Like in the Powell ball game, the Wildcats have gotten a few turnovers, and let's see if they can take advantage of this one right here. Cole Adams, Matthew Swigert with interceptions. The Wildcats also have a fumble recovery in this one. 11 seconds to play. The Wildcats still have that time. Need to get some points. Leading 17 to 7, 11 seconds to play. Let's see what Mitchell can do. Mitchell's going to fire a pass. He's going to be caught. And out of bounds at the 20, 7 seconds to play. It's going to be third down as Hayward, Brandon Hayward, makes the reception for the Wildcats, number 13. His brother, Jalen Hayward, might see some action tonight. We'll see. As once again, the Wildcats are going to gamble here with their one timeout, seven seconds to play. Whatever you got to do, you got to do it quick, and you got to be aware. If there's no time, you got to call that timeout. Coach Gaddis runs up to the line judge to say, I'm going to call a timeout immediately. Mitchell Gibbons, back to pass. End zone. Man there. Pass there. Touchdown. He makes the catch. Touchdown, Oak Ridge. A beautiful 
over the shoulder catch by the freshman, Brandon Hayward. He put that pass beautifully over his shoulder, put his two hands up, pulled it down at the pylon and the back end of the end zone, and Oak Ridge taking advantage of the Cole Adams interception. One second to play, they lead Saudi Daisy, 23 to seven. Efren Rodriguez to attempt the extra point. Mitchell Gibbons to hold. Kai Hirsch to snap, balls down, pressure. Oh, he didn't hit it well. Let's see if it goes in. It is good. He didn't hit it pretty, but it doesn't matter. He doesn't get, you know, beauty points on it as long as it splits the uprights. 24 to seven, Oak Ridge. Very short pop-up kick, fielded right at the 41-yard line as the first half. Officially on the scoreboard, it has zeros. Let's see if it indeed is the end of the first half. There's no time on the clock. The Saudi Daisy offense is on the field. The Wildcats were heading up the steps. The official holds up the ball, and the Wildcats and Saudi Daisy Trojans do head to the dressing room. The second half about to get underway, 24-7 the score. Saudi Daisy to kick off, and here it is. It's an onside kick, squib actually. It's going to be fielded by Jabrice at the 20. Jabrice Taylor at the 30, to the 35, to the 40. There he moves the ball to the 50-yard line. He was an arm tackle away, Mike Sheehan, from taking that all the way to Dean's Restaurant. He certainly was. Dave. That ball skipped all the way down the field, all the way to the 20. Jarice picked it up and went right down the middle. Good blocking right at the point of contact for the Wildcat. Just that one little arm tackle flipped him on his leg and he went down, but not before an excellent return. Another good field position for the Wildcat. The ball on the Saudi Daisy 47. And here come the Wildcats. Mitchell Gibbons back up. First down, 10 yards to go, 11.54 to play. Mitchell's going to pass from first down. Pass is going to be caught, reversing field and going down. Not a good decision that time. The Wildcats, Jonathan Stewart made the catch at the 45-yard line, had nothing on the short side of the field, elected to come back, and he lost five yards. Not a great decision that time by Jonathan. No, David, good, good penetration that time by the Saudi Doji Trojans, and the linebacker came up and smothered him for a five-yard loss. It'll be second down and 16 yards to go. Wildcats, Mitchell Gibbons, lone running back behind him, Kendall Jackson. Wildcats have Brandon Hayward split to the left. Mitchell's going to pass to him. Pass is caught. He moves the ball across the 50-yard line down to the Saudi Daisy 49-yard line. Will it be for Oak Ridge? Third down, 11 minutes to play here in this third quarter. The Wildcats on top, 24 to 7. Third down, seven yards to go for the Wildcats. Wildcats, as I mentioned, a couple of injuries, and the Wildcats are thin anyway with linemen. Wildcats. Uh, and I'll, I'll talk about that here in a moment. 10.50 to play third quarter, third down, six yards to go. Mitchell from the Saudi 49, hands it to Kendall Jackson. That's a 10 bank of Oak Ridge first down. He moves the ball across the 40, and that is indeed a first down. The Wildcats on the line with Michael Walker. Michael's played some ball this year. He's six foot two, 215 pounds. The Wildcats still on the line. Have Robert Hill, he's a senior player. Ethan Hewitt is the senior uh, center, I mean. Wildcats playing with some young linemen right now. First down, 10 yards to go at the Saudi 41. Slot man is Cole Adams. Running back is Kendall Jackson. Mitchell's going to pass. Pass is caught. Brandon Hayward breaks the tackle, dragging Trojans down the field. He has another 10 back of Oak Ridge first down. That time... Brandon Hayward, the freshman, looked very similar like Sheehan to Kendall Jackson as a guy grabbed him and he drug him and gave him a tour of Lincolnship Field. He certainly did, David. That just shows you the power in his legs. <laughs> Give Mitchell Gibbons credit. Boy, he, he threw that ball right into the numbers and he was able to turn the ball upfield and get a big, another big first down as the Wildcats move the ball down to the 18-yard line of the Trojans. First down, 10 yards to go, as Mike said, at the 18-yard line, 24-7 Oak Ridge. Mitchell hands it off to Kendall Jackson, heading towards the Oak Ridge sideline. Now cuts back inside, moves the ball to the 15-yard line. Tried to get to the outside, didn't see much there, and then cut it back inside. 
You know, Mike, the Wildcats, as I've been saying, they're thin anyway with linemen. They've had uh, several injuries this year out on the line of scrimmage. The Wildcats uh, lose a couple more linemen here tonight. Yeah, and you know, Walter Rice, the starting center for the Wildcats, broke his ankle there, I believe, in the Hardin Valley game, wasn't it, David? Uh, Campbell County, I believe it was, as the Wildcats come up to the line here. Second down, six yards to go. The ball officially at the 14-yard line. Wildcats, Mitchell hands it off once again. Now he actually throws it into the end zone. I'm sorry, I got fooled by the fake, and it'll be incomplete. It'll bring up third down and six. Yeah, the Wildcats have had a few more injuries than we're accustomed to, but that's the nature of the football game. But when you're thin with depth, that is a concern. And uh, uh, Alex Myers will talk to Coach Gaddis after the ball game, and we'll get the status of uh, Dalla, uh, Nick Dallas and, of course, Vinny West. I'd hate to see Vinny West have to be out for any prolonged time. He's a heart and soul of the offensive line for the Wildcats. Third down, six yards to go. Kendall. From the Saudi 14-yard line, Mitchell to pass all day. Now it breaks down. Now he runs, and he's dropped. Might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. He looked. Good coverage by Saudi Daisy. And let's see. It looks like Efren Rodriguez is going to come back in the ballgame. Efren's already hit a 26-yard field goal. Let's see what the big sophomore can do here. The Wildcats getting the big guy in there. He's going to put the block down once again at the 20 five-yard line, making this a 35-yard field goal from the center part of the field. He hit a 35-yarder at Clinton earlier this year. Fourth and 10. Hold by Gibbons. This time he hits it, kind of angles off to the left side. It is up, though. Efren has another one. Efren Rodriguez with a 35-yard field goal, and Oak Ridge leads Saudi Daisy 27-7. to 8-19 to play third quarter. We'll be back with a Wildcat kickoff in 60 seconds. Wildcats to kick off. Tyler Dunham is going to hit a deep one this time. It's going to be a, a fair catch made right at the 15-yard line. And that is where Saudi Daisy will take over. First down and 10 yards to go. 27 to 7. Mike, 27 unanswered points. Yeah, that's just absolutely great, David. I, I'm real proud of Efren Rodriguez, the way he's kicking the ball with great consistency and good blocking up front for the Wildcats to hold out the Saudi Daisy Trojans. And now they lead much more comfortably at 27 to 7. Eight minutes, 17 seconds to play here in the third quarter. 14 yard line is where Saudi Daisy begins this drive down 27 to 7. First down, 10 yards to go. Quarterback Barnes is going to roll to his left, run it up the field, and get good yardage. Moves the ball to the 20 yard line, gain of six. Mike. I don't know if Barnes has been this kind of a runner all season long. Coach Gaddis told me he has watched all 10 of Saudi Daisy's ball games, but quarterback's very elusive, and he picks really, makes really good decisions when he decides to run the ball. Yes, he definitely does, David. And he's a pretty powerful young man, as I said earlier. He, you know, built a little bit like Kendall Jackson. He's about the same size, and he's, he's a great runner. He's back to pass on this play. Fires a pass incomplete, Preston Turner defending. And right there, he displayed a pretty strong arm. He probably put a little bit too much on that one. It's incomplete. It's third down, five yards to go, 740 to play. Mike, I'm going to challenge you to keep up with that Fulton Ray County game the best you can here. As the Wildcats would love to play at home next week if Fulton can pull off the upset win down in Evansville. Third down, five yards to go for Saudi Daisy at their own 19-yard line. 27-7 Oak Ridge, Barnes to pass. All day, fires the pass. It is going to be incomplete. Defending out there, Preston Turner along with Jonathan Stewart. It's fourth down, and the punt team will come on. Mike, let's talk about that first quarter. The Wildcats, I, I thought, played very uninspired football in the first quarter. Whatever got them, you know, woke them up, it's really been big time good football being played by the Wildcats since then. They have scored 27 unanswered points and should get great field position here as Preston Turner's back and the punter hits it off the side of his foot and it takes a good Saudi Daisy roll all the way down to the Oak Ridge Looks like the 37-yard line, and that is where the Wildcats will take over first down, 10 yards to go. Uninspired football in the first quarter. The Wildcats look sharp the last uh, in the second quarter and to start the third quarter. Yeah, David, you know, they got off to a really slow start, which is 
I don't, for whatever reason, things just weren't going the Wildcats' way in the first quarter. But Coach Gaddis and, and all the other coaches got together, put their heads together, and told them to settle down, play their own game. And ever since then, things have gone the Wildcats' way. I'm real pleased to see that. First down, 10 yards to go. Once again, Mitchell Gibbons starts this drive at the 37. Play is halted before it ever really gets going. The Wildcats have Darren Osborne in the ball game. Offensively, let me check those numbers, make sure I'm getting this right. I, I see Michael Walker out there, Ethan Hewitt, Chris Hill is in there, Kaysen Staggs, and I'm missing somebody, I believe. Let's see. I'm looking down on the line of scrimmage there. I'm missing another lineman. Oh, there it is, number 74 for the Wildcats, who does not appear on my roster, and I apologize for that. It'll be first down, 15 yards to go after a five-yard penalty. Mitchell's going to hand it off to Kendall Jackson. Up the middle, he breaks free at the 50-yard line, and that is where he picks up a 10-bank of Oak Ridge first down. I tell you, he just got behind his center and the right side of the line, including uh, Ethan Hewitt, and at that, the center and the right side of the line, and that is a 10 bank of Oak Ridge first down. 7 12 to play. Not the biggest playoff crowd we've had here at Blankenship Field. Saudi Daisy hardly brought anybody, to be honest with you. Kind of a slim pickings here for the Trojans. Wildcat stands are, I don't know, very sparse as well, especially for a playoff ball game. First down, 10 yards to go at the 49 yard line. Five or 6.52 to play. Once again, the Wildcats trying to run the ball. Coach Gaddis, I don't know if you heard this, Mike, but he told me in the pregame show, despite the fact that in several recent ball games, the Wildcats have been able to get good yardage running the ball with Kendall Jackson, he is still not pleased with the running game of the Wildcats. He, you know, Mitchell's been pretty good all year. He's, he's been pretty solid at quarterback, but the Wildcats still trying to kind of perfect that running game and um, that's why they continue to try to pound it out and work time off the clock. Second down, 10 yards to go for the Wildcats. Two receivers to the right, Brandon Hayward to the left. Mitchell low snap, here's the slant. It's gonna be incomplete. That would have been six points for the Wildcats if he makes the catch. Jonathan Stewart was the intended receiver. It'll be third down, 10 yards to go. Not a bad looking pass. There was a few white shirts around there, but if Jonathan makes the reception there, Mike Sheehan, that's a touchdown. Absolutely, David. It just wasn't meant to be that time. Kind of went off his fingertips. And the Wildcats still got third down and 10 situation at the 49 of the Trojans. So the Wildcats need a big play right here to get back in this and get a first down. Ball is at the 49-yard line of the Wildcats. Mitchell with one lone running back in motion. Actually comes Jalen Hayward. Wildcats Mitchell Gibbons back to pass. Dumps it, tried to get it over to Hayward and it's incomplete. One of the few times since the first quarter, honestly, Mike, that Saudi Daisy has had some pressure and the Wildcats will be forced to punt. The Wildcats have not punted in this ball game, but one time, and if I can remember that, the Wildcats actually went for a fake punt and Preston didn't get it. I think unless it's just going to be clear sailing for Preston Turner, I'm fairly confident Coach Gaddis has said do not run it if you don't think you can get a first down we'll see what they can do jacob bourbon's back there as well kai hirsch to snap jacob bourbon to punt a lot of pressure he gets it off though it's a high kick and it's going to be returned by the saudi daisy trojans but not too far they get just back to the 15 yard line where the wildcats make the stop and that is Jaden elam all the way down the field to make the stop Five minutes, 58 seconds to play third quarter. The Wildcats trying to advance to the second round of the TSSAA playoffs. 27 to seven is our score. Back on defense will go the Wildcats once again. We'll check, make sure. I know that Nick Dallas is out of the ball game. The Wildcats having to go, players, a lot of players going both ways. I see Isaiah Boone's on the line. J.K. Morgan is on the line for the Wildcats. And the, uh, I believe the Wildcats, as a timeout is asked for, 5.58 to play, 27-7 to 7 is our score. It is first down, 10 yards to go at the 14-yard line. The Saudi Daisy Trojans from North Hamilton County. Barnes rolls to his right. Let's see if he wants to run it. He's going to head towards the sideline, headed up the sideline, and thinks better of taking contact. 
and he runs out of bounds. Mike, I don't know if you heard uh, the Wildcats are going to maintain the uh, in 5A football, but uh, the Fulton Falcons will be dropping down a classification. West will be moving to the other region with the Central Bobcats and the Halls Red Devils. The Wildcats, uh, Lenore City is going to join our region, but we're going to lose Fulton and West. Barnes to pass across the way. It's caught. Moves the ball up the field. Short game once again, but had you heard that, Mike? Yeah, that, that's very interesting, David. I think these realignments, you know, happen, what, every two or three years, and so – Looks like the wild that, that may be in the Wildcats' favor as far as I'm concerned. One of the things that's interesting, this Saudi Daisy team, this might be the last time we play them for a while, unless we you know play them in a regular season ball game. They are gonna drop down to four A after this year. It was enough for a first down up to the twenty six yard line. Barnes is gonna hand it off to Wittenbarger and he has some pretty good running room, moves the ball to the thirty five yard line. They also have had some realignment to take place on the basketball, baseball side of things. There is going to be an extra classification added to the TSSAA, and Oak Ridge is going to be playing 4A basketball. We'll talk about that when we get a chance. Saudi Daisy gains eight. It'll be second down, two yards to go from the 34. Little screen pass is caught. Matthew Swaggart makes the stop right at the sticks. Clinton. Halls and Anderson County will not be in Oak Ridge's district next year in basketball. Big shocker there. I'm sure we'll probably still play Clinton, but those three teams will be in 3A while Oak Ridge will be in 4A. Wow, that's, that shocks me, David. That's very interesting. Here, come the, here comes the uh, <laughs> Trojans once again. Third down, one yard to go. The ball's at the 35-yard line, handoff. Now the quarterback's going to run it up the sideline. Smooth sailing, unless Matthew Swigert can slow him down. They push him out of bounds at around the 35-yard line. Jacob Bourbon comes over to do so. He just came out of there and was able to get great yardage. There was nobody. Matthew Swigert was trying to get off a block here, but he was 20 yards up the field, and once again, Barnes scrambles for a first down. He is so elusive, Mike Sheehan. He definitely is. He's a very impressive runner, David. He gets outside and he makes people miss and he gets big yardage on a lot of his runs. Once again, Barnes back to pass. He's gonna go deep down the way. There's the man, there's the pass, incomplete. No flags, Saudi Daisy wants a flag. The head coach comes screaming up the sidelines. There was, what would you call it, I guess, kind of Face guarding, boy, the car, Saudi Daisy coach not happy at all. Matthew Swigert was up in the grill of the Saudi Daisy receiver, that's for sure, but there is no yellow laundry on the field, Mike Sheehan. David, Matthew Swigert did a great job. I thought his timing was really good. Just as the ball got there, he was right in his grill, and he was unable. It almost hit Matthew in the back of the head. Here comes the quarterback trying to run this time. Nowhere to go except down. Jacob Bourbon stays at home, drops him to the turf along with J.K. Morgan. Looks like the Wildcats also had Kai Hirsch around the play. It's now third down, nine yards to go for Saudi Daisy. The ball is at the 40-yard line of Oak Ridge, 3.49 to play in the third quarter. 27 to seven, the Wildcats on top of Saudi Daisy. The Wildcats have never lost a playoff game to the Saudi Daisy Trojans. The Wildcats are five and oh. They've played them six of the last seven years in the playoffs. It'll be third down, 10 yards to go. Barnes to pass, in trouble, boom! He is blasted, he is sacked, down he goes. Kai Hirsch and one other Wildcat come over to make the stop. Matthew Swigert, but it was Kai who takes him down hard all the way back at the 45-yard line. It'll be fourth down, and they'll be in punt formation. Preston Turner steps back at the 20-yard line and beyond. On, he'll put his heels at around the 10. It's fourth down and about 19 yards to go. Big big sack by Kai Hirsch. Here's the snap, it's good. Here's the punt, it's high, it's very short. Preston Turner makes the catch, the fair catch, at the 17 yard line, and that is where the Oak Ridge offense will take over, first down, 10 yards to go. The Oak Ridge High School Band playing in front of a crowd which is 
as uh, I kind of said it like this, uh, Mike, for a playoff ball game, I guess you'd have to say it's pretty sparse. Absolutely, David. I'm not really surprised. I mean, it's a little cool out here tonight, but, you know, and it, we're streaming this thing live on YouTube, repradio.com. And we're on the radio 92.7, so a lot of people, I hope, are home. Listen to this game because it's, these playoff games are very important and to keep advancing for the TSSAA. Wildcats hand it off to Jabrice Taylor. He just jets through the hole on the left side of the Oak Ridge line and picks up about 11 yards on the play. It's right at the sticks. They're going to move the chains. Officially, that is another 10 bank of Oak Ridge first down. Jabrice Taylor and Kendall Jackson, two different styles of running. Kendall's big, powerful. Jabrice just explodes when he hits the hole, and that is a first down. Jalen Hayward drifts off to the right side wide, along with Jonathan Stewart. Great to have Jalen Hayward back playing. His little brother, Brandon Hayward, the freshman, off to the left side. Handoff goes to Jabrice, and Jabrice finds his way to the outside. He's at the 40. He's at the 45 to the 50 to the 45. Driven out of bounds in Saudi Daisy territory all the way down to around officially, let's see, officially around the 35-yard line. Let's see if where they're gonna put the ball down. One guy spotted him out at the 35, and they're gonna put the ball down all the way up the field at the 35. That's that's where I thought the guy spotted him. He went all the way down inside the 20, but uh, he went out of bounds. It'll be a first and 10 for the Wildcats. 2-11 to play in the third quarter, 27. Two seven the score. Lynn Calvert listening to our broadcast tonight on FM 92.7. The guys in Alabama, including Mike Underwood listening to us. James Branson somewhere in Arkansas listening to the broadcast tonight. 27-7 the score. 2-11 to play here in the third quarter. The Wildcats first down 10 yards to go at the Saudi Daisy 35-yard line. Mitchell's going to hand it off to Jabrice. Jabrice gets free once again, moves the ball once again across the 25-yard line down to the 24-yard line. That is close to another 10 bank of Oak Ridge first down. They are going to move the change. Jabrice Taylor comes into the ball game, giving the Wildcats some fresh legs, and that is another first down for Oak Ridge. The Wildcat offensive line, although banged up, beginning to move the much smaller Saudi Daisy Trojan line. A minute 49 and counting, 27 to seven. The Wildcats in the lead here in the third period. Jabrice Taylor behind Mitchell Gibbons. The Wildcats have Preston Turner in a slot receiver to the left, but it's gonna be Jabrice running the ball, getting a block to the outside, but he stumbles. Might have run into his own lineman there. And I think that is the case. It'll be with 90 seconds to play in the third quarter. Second down facing the Wildcats. And Mike, the offensive line, opening up some holes. Looks like Saudi Daisy's defensive front getting tired. Yeah, there definitely are, David. And the line's doing a much better job of penetrating with Michael Walker on a big block there for the Wildcats that time, along with center Ethan Hewitt. And to get to Bryce up, up the field for a, another four-yard gain on that particular play. From the 18-yard line, second down, six yards to go. So, again, a four. Mitchell's going to hand it off. Jalen Hayward cuts back inside and goes down right at the 15-yard line. It's a gain of three. Jalen's been out for a long time. He's got hurt in an earlier ball game, and has, it's been over a month. And, you know, he is finally back with the Wildcats. He's a senior member of this team. It's great to have him back there. 35 seconds to play, third quarter. It'll be third down, three yards to go, officially at the 15-yard line, 27 to seven. The Wildcats fell behind seven to nothing in the first quarter, but have scored 27 unanswered points since that time. Down to 19 seconds. The play clock is down to 11. Mitchell Gibbons from the 15-yard line of the Trojans. And Jabrice gets the handoff. He's got some running room. He cuts inside. Just barely got knocked down at around the 10-yard line, but that is enough for another 10 bank of Oak Ridge first down. Jabrice Taylor, as I said, Mike, and, that, and that's probably going to be the final play. We'll hold it right here just for a second. Now, why don't we go ahead and send it off? 27-7, to 7, our score. We'll be back with the fourth and final quarter in 60 seconds. The Wildcats have it first down, a goal to go. The ball is at the, Ray, or the uh, Saudi Daisy 8-yard line. Jabrice Taylor, the running back. The Wildcats have two receivers to the left. 
Darren Osborne in a slot to the left. The Wildcats, Mitchell hands it off to Bryce. Jabrice met right at the seven yard line. So it's a gain of a yard on the play. No need to really throw the ball except, you know, two. Wildcats very content to work time off the clock and come away with the victory. Absolutely, David. And an update on that Ray County Fulton game. It's now moved into the fourth quarter with Ray County still leading a slim seven to nothing. It's been a while since we have been down to Ray County. They've been here a couple times in the playoffs. Second down, seven, a goal to go at the seven-yard line. Wildcats in a slot with Osborne. He lines up on the right side. Mitchell, lone running back, Jabrice Taylor. He gets the handoff. He is hit at the line of scrimmage, might have even lost a yard. Wildcats content to run the, run the, run the football, but last couple of runs, it's been stingy, stingy defense by the Saudi Daisy Trojans. As the Wildcats lead it 27 to 7, we're at the 11-minute mark of the ball game. At the conclusion of the game, Alex Myers will have player interviews down on the field, along with Coach Joe Gaddis. The Wildcats looking over to the sideline. Brian Wyatt signals in the play. The play clock is down to 16 seconds and counting. The game clock 10:43 to play in somebody's season. Ball is at the eight-yard line. Third down, goal to go. Let's see if the Wildcats do try to pass. Jonathan Stewart, man coverage here on the right side, single man to the left. Mitchell looks to Jonathan, but he is sacked. 20-yard line. Nobody on, the, on that side of the line was able to kind of even slow down the pursuit of the Saudi Daisy Trojans, and Big Efren's going to have to come back in the ballgame to attempt another field goal. He has hit all of his extra points. He's hit two field goals in this one. 27-7 to seven is the score. Once again, he will put the block down at the... Looks like the 24-yard line, making this a 34-yard field goal. He's hit a 35-yarder and a 26-yarder in this one. Mitchell Gibbons to hold, Kai Hirsch to snap. Ball is down, lots of pressure. He hits it well again. It's up, and it is good. Efren Rodriguez, the kicking game. Coach Gaddis is going to be happy tonight. The Wildcats lead Saudi Daisy. Nine minutes, 48 seconds to play in the ball game. 30-7 Oak Ridge, back in 60 seconds. Welcome back once again to Blankenship Field. 30 to seven the score, the Wildcats on top of Saudi Daisy. It looks like we're moving on to the second round of the TWSAA playoffs and Saudi Daisy will close it out here. Once again, the Wildcats are five and zero oh in the Joe Gaddis era. The second time around in playoff ball games, the Wildcats have beaten up on Saudi. Five of the last six years in the playoffs, the last two down in Saudi Daisy. Wildcats have never lost a postseason game to our friends from North Hamilton County. 30 to seven our score, Tyler Dunham to kick off once again for the Wildcats. Wildcats in the lead, 30 to seven here at Blankenship Field. Here's the kick, he hits it deep this time. It's gonna go bounding and field it at the five. Reverses courses to the 10 on the Oak Ridge sideline and down he goes. The Wildcats get down the field again with Kai Hirsch. He knocks him down at the 10 yard line. And it'll be Saudi Daisy's offense first down and 10 yards to go. 30 to seven is our score. The Wildcats in the lead. Once again, here comes Saudi Daisy. They're moving. If you're looking down from the home side here at Blankenship Field, they have three receivers split to the left of the quarterback. Barnes, who's done a really good job tonight, just haven't been able to put but one touchdown on the board, though. He's going to drop back to pass. Feeling some pressure, in a lot of trouble. He breaks through there and cuts to the outside and then goes down at around the 17-yard line. The Wildcats finally track him down, I think, for the Wildcats. Trying to look at that number. Looks like it was J.K. Morgan, yes, who makes the stop. It'll be a gain of seven on the play. Second down, three yards to go. Nine minutes, 17 seconds to play. It'll be right, or actually was Morgan. It was Morgan on the, on the stop. Second down, three yards to go. I thought it was right there. Barnes to pass all day. Now it's breaking down on him. Now he's in a lot of trouble. He is going to be sacked. And he had no time. And he got sacked. Back at the nine yard line. And now it's third down, 11 yards to go. 8.34 to play in Saudi Daisy season unless they come back with a miraculous comeback here. Quarterback once again, Barnes, back to pass, in trouble, 
Rolls into the end zone, gonna fire one out here, pass is caught, but right at the line of scrimmage, Preston Turner makes the stop along with Jaden Elam. Elam. It'll be fourth down, and once again, the punt team will come onto the field. Mike Sheehan, Saudi Daisy getting tired. They definitely are, David. The Wildcats have worn them down, and they're playing really tough defense now, and they're gonna have to punt this ball from the about three yards deep in the end zone, and the Wildcats could easily return this for another big touchdown. Let's see what we happened here. They're putting their pressure on him, David. The low kick, Preston's gonna field it at the 50. Cuts to the Oak Ridge sideline, then cuts back to the Saudi Daisy sideline. Cannot elude the wave of white shirts for the Saudi Daisy Trojans, but does return it to the 42 yard line. Seven minutes, 37 seconds to play, 30 to seven. Oak Ridge in the lead. Let's see if we can get some new players into the ball game. I know this is a playoff ball game. You want to make sure you win the ball game. I remember the the 2001 ball game down in Saudi Daisy. We thought we had that regular season game one. Ended up being an overtime loss to the Trojans down there. As the Wildcat offense is on the field once again. Coming out of the game is Kendall Jackson. He was in earlier, but uh, he wanted to go back in and play, but no need to wear him out as Jabari Taylor, very effective running back, is back in the game for Oak Ridge. First and 10, 7.37 a play, and Jabari is going to get the handoff, and Jabari, and the flag goes down. Right in the middle of the field, we might have a hold here. Where they, where they threw the flag, it was right in the middle part of the line. I didn't see it, Mike, but usually when the, ball, when the flag goes down there, that's holding. Yeah, that's exactly what's going to happen. The Wildcats are going to be backed up. And let's see, going to be, I'd say, back to the, about the what, David, 35? Uh, no, not that far nope. back. They're going to they're gonna walk it back across midfield. They're going to put it down at the 48-yard line right. of the yeah. Saudi Daisy Trojans. So it's now going to be first down and 20 yards to go, 7.28 to play in the ballgame, 30-7 to 7, Oak Ridge in the lead. The Wildcats will go 13 and three, 13 and two, or 14 and two all time against Saudi Daisy with the win here today. And the Wildcats will head to the second round in seven minutes and 11 seconds. Stay tuned for the post game show. Mitchell Gibbons gonna fire a pass, pass is gonna be caught. And the Wildcats, Brandon Hayward moves the ball to the 35 yard line, gang tackled by five or six white shirts from Saudi Daisy. Really nice pass, really nice catch by the freshman. It'll be a gain on the play of eight. Second down, 12 yards to go. Mainer on the stop. The Wildcats have it at the Saudi Daisy 48 yard line, 643 to play in the ball game. Remember, Alex Myers will be joining the crew here in a moment. He'll be interviewing down on Blankenship Field. Coach Joe Gaddis, maybe Efren Rodriguez, maybe Cole Adams, we'll see. It'll be second down, 13 yards to go at the 48-yard line. And here comes Jabrice running. Jabrice to the 42-yard line. It's going to be third down and long facing the Wildcats. Mike, we're headed to the second round. Yeah, it's been a great game, David. I'm real pleased that the Wildcats are going to be moving on. You know, as you talked about a little while ago, Cole Adams had a big game. Now he's got a fumble recovery. And then he had an interception return all the way down to the 32. The Wildcats were able to score on that drive. Cole's playing a well of a game tonight. We're down to six minutes and nine seconds to play in the ball game. 30 to seven is our score. And the Wildcats have it third down, 10 yards to go. So the holding penalty, a big one here. As the Wildcats come to the line, the ball is at the 42-yard line of Saudi Daisy. Senior Jonathan Stewart split out to the right of the quarterback. The Wildcats have a slot man. His name is Preston Turner. Wildcats have Brandon Hayward as a receiver to the left. Mitchell's going to pass. Floats it down the way. Almost a beautiful one-handed grab by the freshman. Mitchell kind of a little bit behind it, too much behind it that time, and he throws it too high. It's incomplete. It's fourth down and 10. And the punt team will come onto the field, I do believe, for the Wildcats. The Wildcats, one of the few times they haven't been able to get things going, they are comfortably ahead of the Trojans. 30 to 7 is our score. The winner of this game takes on the winner of the Fulton Ray County ball game. I've said this several times. If Fulton wins, we're back at Blankenship Field for a 7 o'clock kickoff next week. If Ray County wins, we're down there for a 7 o'clock kickoff. Punt formation, Oak Ridge, fourth and 10. 
Snap goes to Preston. He does punt it. High spiraling kick. And I think this one's going to sail in the end zone. It is a touchback. Marcus Melton tried to do the best he could to try to keep it from going into the end zone. But Preston got all of that one. It'll be first down, 10 yards to go at the 20-yard line. Remember, at the conclusion of the game, Mark and Shauna Hayes will have statistics. Mike will have the scoring summary. Alex will be down on the field uh, talking with uh, players, hopefully Efren Rodriguez. I'm going to try to walk down there and try to make sure Alex gets him on the air. He's had three field goals in this one. Ball's at the 20. First down and 10 yards to go. Down to 539 to play. And... It'll be, once again, the Trojans, first and 10 at the 20, 14 to nothing, Ray County on top of Fulton. Right now, it looks like we're heading down to Ray County next Friday night. We have our own press box down there, so that's okay. Barnes to pass. He's in a lot of trouble, and he works the ball to the field. Actually, that's a new quarterback in there. That's that Wildcat-type quarterback in there for Saudi Daisy, and he carries the ball forward. He is knocked down by Trey Rowe. That is Slater Hickman. Now in at the quarterback position, they have Ricketts as a receiver. Gain of two, second down, eight yards to go. Here comes Saudi Daisy. They put seven on the board, the first scores of the ball games, but the Wildcats have put 30 on the board since that time. Down to 519 to play in Saudi Daisy's season here. Quarterback hands it. No, he's going to pass it. He's going to go deep. Passes there. Oh, beautiful catch. All the way in the middle part of the field. Oh, what a great catch. Matthew Swiger was right on him like glue. He did get a little bit behind him. And just a great over-the-shoulder catch. Beautiful catch, Mike Sheehan. David, that was Isaac Barnes, the quarterback, that caught that pass for a huge gainer for the Saudi Daisy Trojan. And now they're down in Wildcat territory all the way down to the 31-yard line. Once again, he's going to drop back to pass. Now he's going to run. Backside pressure pass is oh, almost intercepted, and it is. Flags are down on the play. The Wildcats intercepted. Coming down the field with it was the Wildcats, but we'll see if we have pass interference. There was a lot of contact down there. Matthew Swigert comes up with the ball. One of the Trojans is down on the play, and he is injured. Why don't we take an injury timeout? We'll come back and recap what happened. We'll be back. The, this uh, timeout, this injury timeout, is brought to you by the Oak Ridge Pharmacy. We'll be back to Blankenship Field. The Wildcats up 30-7. to 7. We'll be back in 60 seconds. Thanks a lot. The injured Saudi Daisy man comes off the field under his own power. The Wildcats are going to be penalized. I believe the interception won't count. There was a lot of contact there. Mike, are you surprised at the Walker Valley Pal score? What's the latest one we have there? Well, right now I've got 10, 10 to 7, but I'm going to have to look at my phone and go to Coach T. Com and see what they say about that particular game. I'll get right back La with you. Last one, I, last one I had, Mike, was Walker Valley 21 to 16 over Pal in the fourth. So. That would be a big shocker. Walker Valley's a good football team, and they'll take on West if that score holds up, and Matt Lowe's Pal Panthers won't advance to the second round if that score holds up. 4.20 to play, penalty against Oak Ridge. Move to the 18-yard line where it's first down, 10 yards to go. 30-7 to seven is our score. Wildcat defense on the field here. The Barnes is back in at quarterback. Actually, it's going to be... A pass to flicker, boom, a big, big hit on the intended receiver. Wildcats make a big, big shot on the intended receiver. Pass is incomplete. Really big hit out there. Pass is incomplete. Second down and 10 yards to go. Cole Adams defending for the Wildcats. Down to 4.07 to play in the ball game. Second down, 10. 30 to 7 is our score. Oak Ridge headed for a victory here at Blankenship Field where they've been so successful over the years in playoff action. I, I've talked about this as play is halted once again. In playoff ball games at Blankenship Field, the Wildcats have just been totally dominant, dominant over the years. The Wildcats, as I've said this, are 48 and 10 all time as the Trojans have it here. Second down, 15 yards to go. They are, after they were penalized, 48 and 10 at Blankenship Field, 22 and 23 on the road. Penalty against Saudi Daisy, second and 15. They're going to pass across the middle. Pass is going to be incomplete. Right at the five yard line. That might have been a touchdown. He just dropped it, Mike. Yeah, he didn't just drop it. Uh, 
Oak Ridge's Jonathan Stewart blasted him just as he got caught the ball, David, and caused the incomplete pass with a good breakup by Jonathan Stewart. Our camera personnel tonight, we have Christian Roses Rodriguez, Matthew Charles, Jordan Osborne. We also have Tyler Morris and up top with us. We also have uh, Kaiser Schwartz, Brian Bennett, our engineer at the station. It's now third down, 15 yards to go, four minutes to play in this ball game. 30 to seven, Oak Ridge in the lead. They're gonna pass, pressure, pass, bat it down at the line of scrimmage. It's fourth down now. Fourth down facing the Trojans as Matthew Swiger got in there along with some others. 3.56 to play, the Wildcats still hustling out on the field here, flying around the field, Soddy Daisy trying to get one last score of their 2020 season. Yeah, Matthew Swagger and Isaiah Boone both, David, putting a lot of pressure that time on the quarterback, Slater Hickman, and they flipped the, hand, flipped the ball right out of his hand for an incomplete pass, and that brings that fourth and 15 for the Trojans on the Wildcat 22. Three minutes, 56 seconds to play in the ball game. 30 to seven is our score. Hickman back to pass, in a lot of trouble. Fires a pass, it's gonna be incomplete. The Wildcats are gonna take over on downs. It was the pressure again, Mike Sheehan, that caused that pass to go awry, and the Wildcat offense is coming on the field. While I have the moment, I wanna say, get well wishes out to Hayden Tarwater, who's not with the Wildcats here tonight. He'll be back with the team on Monday, getting ready for the second round. Hayden, not at the game. Thanks for listening to us, and hope you're feeling better. First down, 10 yards to go. The ball is at the 22-yard line, 3.50 to play in the ball game. Wildcats in the lead, 30-7. to seven. I would be surprised if we pass the ball here, Mike. I think the Wildcats are going to give Saudi Daisy a steady dose of the run game. I totally agree, David. In that last play, Isaiah Boone again got the quarterback by the shoulder pad, turned it around, and caused that incomplete pass. Wildcats have some substitutes in. The Wildcats get a big, strong run up to the 35-yard line. Carrying the ball this time was uh, Jason Coates, number 21. Let's see, the Wildcats have, looks like Drew Thomas in the ball game as a receiver. The Wildcats have a couple other new guys coming into the ball game as receivers and new linemen out there. Actually, boy, I see Staggs, I see Ethan Hewitt, I see Hill. Quarterback is Peyton Sharp. The transfer from Middle Tennessee played in the first quarter because of a situation involving Mitchell. First down, 10 yards to go at the 35-yard line of Oak Ridge. 30-7, to the Wildcats in the lead. Snap, the handoff. There's a fumble picked up, though, by Jason. And then he breaks some tackles, moves the ball forward. I didn't think there was any way in the world there, Mike, that Jason was going to be able to uh, get the ball. For one, he fumbled it, then picked it up, and fortunately went right back into his hands, and he actually picked up a yard. That's just sheer determination, David. He, he really scrapped after that ball. After he you know, went along, rolled along the field for about two yards, he picked it up, got back to the line of scrimmage, kept driving, and got a one-yard gain. Two minutes, 47 seconds to play in the ball game. 30 to seven, Wildcats in the lead. Peyton Sharp, sophomore quarterback, uh, was a starter at Richland High School a year ago as a freshman. And he's joined the Wildcats this off season, learning the system, getting much better. He's gonna hand it off to Jason Coates and Coates is gonna get to the sideline and is gonna be pushed out of bounds. The Oak Ridge student section, the Oak Ridge sidelines reacting to something I see Let's see, as the Wildcats, I want to get some of these other new players in the ball game, Mike. I don't want to slight any of these guys. Lyman look pretty much the same. Looks like Drew, Drew uh, Thomas is in there as a receiver. The Wildcats also have in the ball game. It looks like Andrew Ferreira as a receiver. Wildcats have, looks like splitting out to the far left for them, Justin Crowley. And it'll be with a minute 52 to play in the ball game for Oak Ridge. Third down, five yards to go. Let's see if they let Peyton pass the ball here. One lone running back, the high snap. Peyton pulls it down, and now will have to run it himself. Moves the ball forward. Got back to the 40-yard line, and that's about it. It'll be fourth down. 
face the Wildcats. That time the snap was a little high, and the punt team will come in. We're down to 90 seconds to play in this ballgame. The Wildcats are headed to the second round of the TSSAA playoffs. Most likely, as it would appear, the Wildcats will play Ray County on the road. They're up 14-0 last time we checked. The Wildcats are in punt formation. Play clock is down to 16 seconds. The game clock is down to a minute six. 30-7, the Wildcats in the lead. Wildcats, Preston Turner is going to punt a low line drive kick. It's going to be rolling all the way inside the 15, still rolling, and goes dead right at the 11-yard line where it is down by the Wildcats. And here comes Saudi Daisy on offense for the last time in 2020. Big win for the Wildcats. I was a little bit nervous, Mike Sheehan, when the game started. The first quarter was not going our way, but ever since that time, total domination by the Cardinal and Gray. Yeah, absolutely, David. It's, it's crazy to think that they scored 30 unanswered points after the first quarter to, to you know, put the Saudi Daisy Trojans back on the bus, and their season is over. They'll be hanging their pads up. Then the Wildcats are going to go on, looks like, to Ray County. First down, 10 yards to go. They're going to pass across the way. Pass is incomplete right at around the 17-yard line intended to number 12 for them. And number 12 is Will Ackerman, 5'8", 150-pound senior. The Wildcats on top, 30-7. to We're under a minute to play in the ballgame, 50.5 seconds to play. The Trojans at the 11-yard line. The Wildcats, let's see. Checking some of the other numbers in there. Get some of the new linebackers in there. It looks like perhaps, I'll, I'll check it here in a second, and it'll be Luke Calhoun in the ball game. Quarterback's rolling, in trouble. He is gonna be tackled by the Wildcats. It's gonna be a stop by J.K. Morgan. Luke Calhoun in the ball game. Here comes Marcus Melton in the ball game. Luttrell's coming in. The Wildcats also getting Ferreira in the secondary. The Wildcats have Darren Osborne in the ball game, I mentioned. We're down to 29 seconds to play. It's third down, seven yards to go. And here comes Saudi Daisy. 22 seconds to go. They're going to pass. If he can get out of trouble, he's running backwards. At the three, he's going to fire a pass and throw it out of bounds. Wildcats gave pursuit on the quarterback with Trey Rowe, and he almost got him. And the Wildcats... With 15 seconds to play, lead this one 30 to seven. It's punt formation time. The Wildcats will drop back. Uh, looks like Jonathan Stewart back to receive the punt for the Wildcats. That's something different. Haven't seen Jonathan this year. He can do it though. Cole Adams still in the ball game. Punt formation, they'll be punting from the end zone here with exactly 15 seconds to play. Fourth down, seven yards to go. The Wildcats will head to the second round probably down Evansville, Tennessee. Andy Kelly's hometown, Ray County. Saudi Daisy laid a man onto the field. Play clock is down to 10, 30 to seven our score. We've played Ray County several times in the playoffs in the last couple of years. Here's the punt, it's a low line drive. Jonathan's gonna stay away from it. Jonathan wants no part of that football. It's gonna roll dead and the clock is ticking on down in Saudi Daisy's season is dead as well. 4.2 seconds to play in the ball game, 30 to seven. The Wildcats headed to the second round. Absolutely, David, what an exciting night it's been. And how many times do you see your kicker get 12 points in the game? Efren Rodriguez has had a game of his career so far. There's 4.2 seconds to play here. The Wildcats, Peyton Sharp's gonna be at quarterback for the Wildcats, probably in the victory formation, and that's what I see. The Wildcats are four seconds away from the second round and a trip down to Andy Kelly's home school, the Ray County Golden Eagles. Here's Peyton Sharp, he takes the knee, and the Wildcats have won this first round playoff ball game over the Saudi Daisy Trojans, going 6-0 all time in postseason ball games with Saudi Daisy. The Wildcats win it by a final score of 30-7. to The two teams come out to the center of the field. Mike, the Wildcats took care of business. They win their first round game against Saudi Daisy, and we're headed to the second round. Yeah, off to a rocky start, but came back roaring, David. And that's a very exciting second half, especially for the Wildcats. As they outscored them 24 to nothing, and then two field goals. 
one in the third quarter and one in the fourth quarter for the Wildcats to pull out the 30 to seven victory to advance to the second round of the playoffs. And they'll take on the Ray County Golden Eagles who have just knocked off the Fulton Falcons by a final score of 14 to nothing. Walker Valley still on top of Pell, 21 to 16. Saudi Daisy season is over. The Wildcats move on to the second round with a 30 to seven win. The Betsy Coleman Realty postgame show coming up. Alex Myers will be interviewing down on the field. We'll also have uh, with some players, some coaches, Mark and Shauna's stats. The Wildcats win 30 to seven. We'll be back to Blanket Shift Field with the Betsy Coleman postgame show and player interviews in three minutes. Thank you very much, David. Down here on the field with Cole Adams. Cole, first off, before I get to any individual play, to get out here with the win, first round, potentially the last home game of the season, what does it feel like? What's going through your mind right now? Yeah, as a senior, it was, it was very important to have a one more uh, home game by beating uh, Powell, which was a huge win. So, uh, yeah, it, it meant a lot, and we'll just carry over this momentum to next week. we got a six-game winning streak. A little bit of a slow start for the team offensively and defensively in the first quarter. You got down 7 nothing. After that, it was lights out sayonara for Saudi Daisy. Talk about the first quarter. I know you had a couple big plays, an interception, a fumble recovery. Talk about how those things transpired. Yeah, it's just execution and discipline. Uh, on that fumble recovery, Matthew made a great play. He, he caught the ball, and then Matthew slapped it out, picked it up. Uh, on the interception, we're, we're all over the top. He had to make one decision before the half. So it was just great execution by all, all around in the defense. With the seniors on this team, what does it mean to, 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 to get a win on, the, on probably your last game at Blankenship Field? Uh, it, mean, it means a lot. It really does. Uh, th there's nothing like playing here. Uh, we got a massive student section that supports us, even if we are away. We got a tradition that runs here. Uh, just, it's just a great feeling. I'm going to ask Coach Gaddis about this here in a couple minutes, but I want to ask you too. I was talking okay. to Coach Ted Mitchell on the sideline, Mark Haste up in the stats booth earlier. It seems like every single year, you have Oak Ridge and Saudi Daisy, and then Oak Ridge and Ray County. It seems like every year those two, te those those three teams, I guess, are meeting the playoffs. Right. You got Ray County next week. You just found that out over the PA system. Early thoughts. I know you probably haven't watched a lot of film, but what what does that game mean to you? Not just for you, but for the Oak Ridge teams in the past. Uh, so I remember my sophomore year. So that was like 2018, 2019. Uh, I'm, Mitchell started at quarterback, and we beat them 44 to zero, and they they were predicted to blow us out. And then this year. Uh, they're, uh, I think, 13 and 0 right now. They're undefeated, uh, and they beat Fulton 14 to 0. Um, so, yeah, we'll just have to watch film. You know, uh, take it one step at a time. You know, second round, and then we'll go from there. All right, thank you so much, Cole. Congratulations. Uh, good luck next week. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. We're back down here, as promised, on Blankenship Field with Efren Rodriguez. Efren, I know as a kicker, you probably don't come out to try out for football to be the star of the show. You know that's probably not your role, but a night like tonight, everything is going well. Coach Gaddis kind of stopped the post-game meeting and just gave you a specific shout out. Your team, I know Preston Turner, literally jumped up and started clapping and cheering for you. How did that feel? It felt good having a team like that around me, getting all these opportunities, you know, as a sophomore, bringing this to the table when I was hurt earlier this season. I felt like I had to come back and do what I can do. Kind of a comeback story, uh, being able to do it in general, I'm sure it'd be great, but in the playoffs, I'm sure that meant more sending your senior, helping to send your seniors out uh, on a win, probably the last time on Blankenship Field as a player. What does that mean? Does that get mean a little extra to you? Yes, that does. These seniors are honestly like the best they've ever been to me. As a kicker, I, I get a lot of respect, and they know what I can do. So it's honestly feels really good helping them out. Now, I, I want to ask you this because most people that played football didn't play kicker. It's just, you know, statistically that's not the case. So what's going on through your mind as you as you go next next week into Ray County? Does a game like this help to build confidence to go on the road knowing, hey, if the team needs you, if the game's a little tighter, does a game like this, knowing you have that support, knowing you had success out there, does it, does it give you more confidence? Yeah, it does, honestly. Having three field goals and stuff coming out next week, it seems like it'll be easy. I've never had this much opportunity in a game since I'm just a sophomore. Played freshman last year, didn't get any field goals. So, yeah. I know Coach Gaddis was talking. It's it's good and bad. It's good that you got the field goals and they can count on you. It's bad the offense had to settle for field goals. But I'm sure Coach Gaddis will sleep a little bit better tonight. And I'm sure you will too, knowing that, hey, you got the opportunity and you made the most of it. Congrats again, Efren Rodriguez. Thank you.
And we'll stay right here as Coach Gaddis will chase him down momentarily. He's talking to the new principal at Oak Ridge, another former Wildcat, Garfield Adams. Let's walk over here, if you will, Matthew, as we are now welcomed by or joined by Coach Joe Gaddis. Coach, first off, it's good to be back on Blankenship Field. Um, it's good to talk to you again. Congrats on the win. It's always nice to get a, a playoff win. Well, thank you. Yeah, it's always good to get a playoff win. I, I wasn't really happy with the way we came out. Uh, after a pretty good week of practice, the first quarter was terrible. Um, on both sides of the ball, it was bad. Uh, thank goodness we played good defense for three quarters, and uh, thank goodness we uh, were fortunate enough to score a couple of quick touchdowns late in the first half to really, I mean, it's going to be 10 to 7 at halftime, which which I was, wasn't was happy with at all about that, but we scored twice quick. And then the, the pass from Mitchell Gibbons to Brandon Hayward, you know, with a few seconds left, that was huge. You know, made it 24 to 7. Uh, as you can see, we didn't do anything in the second half either, really, on offense. We kicked two field goals. I think, uh, I think it was 1.3 seconds when the play ended the touchdown at the end of the half. If someone tuned in late, or, or they didn't really see what caught, what happened, but they only start saw the start of the second quarter. What flipped? Obviously, something changed offensively to get going. Was there a particular play that sticks out to you? Uh, you know, I remember a, a couple of pretty good runs that Kendall Jackson had, uh, probably 20, 30 yards. Seemed to inspire our people. Our linemen love that when we run the football. I think that might have helped us emotionally. And then we completed a couple of nice passes and uh, you know scored a couple of touchdowns late. But we definitely were a different team in the second, third, and fourth quarters, especially on defense, but offensively, you know, I told the team, Rodriguez bailed us out. Uh, it's nice to have a guy that's gonna kick three field goals like that and make his two extra points, but, you know, we, or what is it, three extra points, but the downside of that is we've got to knock the ball in the end zone. You know, we've got to come away with seven instead of three, and that's gonna hurt us down the road if we don't get a little more determination uh, to pump the ball into the end zone. You had a great contribution from a number of guys in the backfield in the fourth quarter. Kendall wasn't out there. Was that just to, to rest him up, or is, is, he, is he all good? Uh, he's fine. He just, I think he got a little, had a little foot issue, but uh, you know he could have played, but I decided not to. And I'm sure, Co or I'm sure, Coach, that David Clary will ask you this on Wednesday's show. But I know you guys are a little banged up. You mentioned you guys think you're going to be all right next come next week. Uh, well, just adding on to the question before that, Jabrice Taylor did a heck of a job when he got in there. He can run. He can catch. Uh, he's he's as good a kickoff return guy as we've had here in years. Uh, but back to your final question. Uh, Vinny West uh, has a knee injury. He won't play next week. There's not a chance in the world he'll play. Um, Nick Dallas has a shoulder issue. Uh, he's one of those guys that's that's kind of iffy, to be quite honest. Uh, he can uh, perhaps get in a, in a harness, a brace for his shoulder, and play, but that'll probably be a day-to-day -day thing. He'll have a week of no contact, and hopefully he'll be ready next Friday night. He may not be. Uh, we did put uh, Jackson Adams, who is a tight end for us, we put him in at offensive tackle, and uh, you know he's, he's a great blocker. He just has to play both ways when he does that. Coach, I, I saw that. Um, I saw Jackson I'm doing that. I saw him pull a couple times to get a pancake. I'm sure that'll be great uh, come film time. Um, before, uh, before we move on to Ray County, I want to ask you a quick question to wrap things up about tonight. Um, sending your seniors out, last game probably at Blankenship Field this year. It's always good to get a win here, to do it in the playoffs, to send the seniors off like that. It's got to be extra special. Yeah, I told them at halftime right down here uh, before the second half that we didn't really control if they would ever come back to Blankenship Field or not. It, it's going to be in the hands of others. You know, if we keep winning, we have that chance. But we knew if Fulton had won, we're back. Uh, if Ray County wins, and they did, we go to Ray County. And then beyond that, you know, there are other things that could happen. But right now we knew that this could be the last half of football. So um, it, it meant a lot to them, and uh, they played pretty well in the second half. A couple more questions, Coach. You know I'm, I'm, I'm wordy at times, but we we got to ask. Powell lost. Is that a little bit of a surprise? I saw your players kind of had a physical, a little bit of emotional reaction when they heard that over the PA system. A little bit of a surprise. Does that surprise you? Uh, it's a big surprise to me. I, I saw uh, with my own eyes last Friday night, I saw the Saudi Daisy Walker Valley game. Walker Valley is good. Um, Powell, I, I thought just with their offensive firepower, I didn't see how Walker Valley would hold them to, I guess it turned out to be 16 points. Um, but Walker Valley, uh, may be honestly a little better than I thought they were. And Powell, who knows how the game went. Might have been a turnover. You know, they had five turnovers against us. If it was that kind of game, uh, Walker Valley, I'm not surprised, but it's, I'd have to know more about the game. But just generally speaking, I was pretty stunned by that one. I'm sure you're semi-familiar with what Ray County does. I won't get into strategy right now, but what I will ask is every time it seems I've talked to Coach Ted Mitchell, 
Uh, I, I talked to Cole Adams. I talked to Mark Haste up in the booth. It seems like every single year, just about, Oak Ridge opens up with Soddy Daisy, and then you play Ray County. What is that game? It would always be special, but to, to almost, it's almost like, you know, in the mid-2000s, Dobbins Bennett, right? It's almost like you're starting to form a playoff-specific rivalry with Ray County. What is that game going to mean next week? Well, you know, we played Ray County maybe this will be the fourth time since I've been back and in seven or eight years. Um, you know, they beat us here in a big, big game back in 2014 in the quarterfinals. Um, I think we've beaten them a couple times since then in the playoffs. Uh, it, it's a big game. They're a good program. Um, when you play Ray County, it's totally different than anything than you that you've faced all year on your defensive side they're foot to foot they run power uh, they run right at you uh, you find out really what you're made of um, and what's really inside your soul when you play them because they're going to come out and intend to bloody your mouth bloody your nose it's that type of game especially when we're on defense uh, we'll find out what we're made of because they forced you to do that uh, offensively uh, they're always tough on defense with our offense, so you know it's going to be a physical war, is what it's going to be, and they make the game that way. It's kind of like when you fight Mike Tyson. Those of those of you who remember him, uh, he makes every fight a war. You know, he's not a technician like Floyd Mayweather. Um, Ray County's more like Tyson. The very last thing I promise. Uh, if you could just in a sentence or two sell to Oak Ridge. It's a long drive. I know people may not be excited to make that, but if there's somebody on the fence. And maybe you're trying to sell them, sell why they should come and support this team on the first, road next First week. of all, if they're not excited to go to Ray County, something's wrong with them. Um, you know, to me, if you've got a, a, any blood pressure or any pulse or whatever, and you're a football fan, why wouldn't you go to Ray County? I mean, this, this is going to be round two. I told the team before the game, there's only 16 teams on this side of the state playing football still in the playoffs. Now there's eight, you know, and two of them are going to be at Ray County Friday night, and one of them's us. If you got Oak Ridge football uh, blood in your veins, if it's Cardinal um, or even gray blood for that matter, uh, you got to be there. You got to be there. Uh, you can listen to it, but why in the world would you do that when you can go? I'm excited about going down there. All right, for the love of Pete, Coach, I'm going to let you go. Go up and celebrate with your team, and good luck next week. Thanks. Appreciate it. That was Coach Joe Gaddis here on the field. We'll send it back to you guys. Back to you.